Um, I hadn't heard that before. That, that was brilliant. They, uh, they could be huge if they get lucky. That was January Fiasco, and their EP Waves is out now. Seriously, that was amazing. Uh, my next guest tonight had it all during the Celtic Tiger. The successful businesses, the beautiful home, the property portfolio, and then it all fell apart. Uh, he lost everything, his marriage broke up, and he had a nervous breakdown. He was in such despair that one day he um, went out and bought a rope. So now he's slowly rebuilding his life. He's here to tell us his extraordinary story. Will you please welcome Joe Harris? <laughs> Uh, so, Joe, some people will have read your story in this Sunday Indo over Christmas. Your brother Owen right, uh, yeah. wrote, wrote a bit about you. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, just to take us through again. I said there you had it all. You did really have it all, didn't you? The, yeah, the, I had, yeah. I, yeah. Had, uh, I had a big business. I had four, uh, 30 staff and four offices and four houses and a few cars and, you know, the usual. And uh, nice holidays abroad. And um, I suppose I... Uh, I thought I'd never have a bad day again, as the fellow said. Yeah. And um, the uh, I I no I, I rode a Celtic Tiger fairly hard, all right. Like I was I was a mortgage broker, an insurance broker, and an auctioneer, so I wasn't uh, okay, lamb to the slaughter, like yeah, you know, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, I was corpus mentis, like I was very. I was uh, I thought I was uh, smart, like you know. Yeah. And um, I suppose I was on a bit of an ego trip as well, a bit of a power trip, you know. I I kind of uh, I I was. Um, I pushed it too hard, like, you know, I went to expand it and I, I did it for the right reasons. I wanted to, you know, make employment locally. I wanted to help people. I wanted to help myself, obviously. And uh, I suppose I wanted to be a hero, like, you know, I wanted to be an employer and be well respected in the community and do the right thing, you know. Yeah. And, and you did, you, like, in fairness, you know, you, you put a, a lot back into the community and all that kind of Well, I did. I kind of had a theory that, uh, you know, the more you give, the more you get back, you know. Mm. And uh, I tried to do that, like, you know, I tried to give back as much as I could, like, you know. Um, but at the same time, I did a lot of stupid things, like, you know, yeah, uh, I'd spend it too quickly. Uh, I had four offices in Cork, and Sherry Fitzgerald had only one, like, you know. And, <laughs> 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 so that was the kind of, uh, a bit of an ego trip, I think, like, you know. Okay. So um, I, I just decided then that, uh, like, when, when the, the crash came then, like, and I, I went out of business, it was, um, it was uh, some shock to the system, like, you know. Yeah. Um, I just felt... Um, I suppose uh, it was just like uh, someone turned off the lights, like you know. I, and I did you just go, did it kind of go very quickly for you? Went then very everything quickly, went yeah. Because yeah. once once the once the banks pulled the plug, like the domino effect happens, like because my business collapsed, I lost my career, I lost my um, bank account closed, uh, cars taken off me. Um, I managed to hand the business over to other people, so the staff staff actually kept their jobs. Most of the staff, which okay. is. And did I you pro you property yourself as well? Did you? Yeah, that was all taken back, like you know, because there's a domino effect, you know, because yeah. it's all interlinked, like. And uh, so what happened then was, I suppose, um, you just kind of all overnight, then you're a non-person, like you know. I just had no bank account and I had uh, yeah. no money, and uh, I was talked years working from 20 to 50, and I worked as um, I worked in 20 years in PAYE and 10 years self-employed. And I went into the local doll office thinking that at least I get a couple of hundred euro, four kids, away from four kids. Yeah. And uh, after 30 years working, paying tax, um, nothing. Zilch. Can't give anything. And is that true? No, Self-employed people get nothing. Nothing. Absolutely Even not. Even though they've been employing yeah. other people. Yeah, it's oh. incredible. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. And 20 years of that, was P I was a pay worker. worker. But anyway, um, that was a... And the old office, ironically, in Cork is next to the river, like, you know, which is uh, not yeah, a very yeah, good yeah, idea, yeah, like, you yeah, know, because you're yeah. coming out and you're f demented, like, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and you did have a nervous breakdown, I had you? a nervous breakdown, yeah, yeah. and uh, not a pleasant experience, like, you know. Um, how, did, how did that come on you or whatever? It's just like an anxiety level just shoots up to, like, nine or ten, yeah. and you just can't function, like, you know. I couldn't get out of bed, I couldn't wash myself, I couldn't shower, I couldn't talk early, um, just the... The terror, it was, I, I, obviously I never experienced it before, it was just unbelievable. And you can't do, like, it's, it's bizarre really, because like, you, you, you've just collapsed on your business and everything, everything is taken away. Uh, the state just can't help you, like, or they won't help you. And uh, like the, I think the duty of, of a government is, is to protect the citizens, like, you know, that's the first duty of a government, to protect yeah. the citizens. And like, uh, that's not doing a very good job, like, of protecting your citizens, like, and, it's not, it, and you know, and today, in the current climate, 
you know, they're not doing a very good job protecting their citizens. They're protecting the, the political elite, elite, like, you know, but they're not, yeah. protect, they're not protecting the citizens, like, from the banks. The banks are, are being vicious at times, like, you know, harassing yeah. people, bullying people, terrifying people. And, like, it's OK, to, okay taking on guys like me, I was, I was kind of fairly, fairly tough, I thought, and yeah. it still broke me, like, you know? Yeah. But, like, there's lots of decent people out there that... They just have no money, and they're out of work, and they can't pay. And yes, the bills, and yet the, these these credit companies, these debit, debt collectors, businesses, the financial ser the financial um, financial companies, banks, and so on, yeah. they just let us keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. It is like a joke. It is like a, it is like de debt by a thousand cuts. It is yeah. like torture. It is actually inhuman. And, 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 and do, do, all this is going on for you, and then uh, the marriage broke up as well. Yeah, was, was that because up. of all that stuff? No, not really. No, the marriage uh, broke up because um, I, I suppose that, that, that was part that wasn't, didn't help. Like you know. Yeah. Now I have to say, like I, 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 I was a basket case. Like I collapsed. Like you know. Yeah. I, I was a basket case, and my wife Caroline kept the show on the road. Like it was, um, it was. Uh, It was, um, it was heroic, like, you know, what she did. Yeah. But, um, it was, um... Anyway, I, I, um... And then, Joe, you became kind of... You had been this big high flyer and everything else. Yeah. You became overnight kind of poor, really, didn't you? Oh, you were yeah. looking Completely for money just, off the yeah. Vincent de Paul and... Oh, the Vincent de Paul came regularly and gave me money. And, uh... Family and friends, and I had to go cap in hand like to people and ask them for money. My friends were, I have a lot of friends in Cork, like, and they rallied around me and gave me, gave me some money. But I mean, you can only keep that going for so long, like, mm. you know. And um, I was very lucky with my family and friends, like, that, that I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be here, like, you know. And uh, yeah, I, Can I tell you, so you, you went out and you bought a rope, but I did, to, yeah, to, yeah. And what you were planning, you were to, today I'm going to do away with myself. Yeah, I, 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 I was in bed for six months. I couldn't get out of bed, couldn't function. I saw no future. My future was over. Um, and I put a rope around my neck and I said, I was trying it on, see, could I do it? Would I be able to do it? What I felt like. And I did a few times, like, you know, I mean, to, to this, this wasn't the kind of, this was a process, like, a, this was a, a kind of a, a terror that went on for two or three years, like, it was a horrible uh, existence. Really? Yeah, it's horrible. But, um, my friends were brilliant. Like I, I, I talked to people, and one thing I heard helped me an awful lot. One fellow said, "Joe, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem." Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I found that great. Because uh, it's just funny. So many people are in that moment yeah. you're in, and like the ones who are unlucky, yeah. they, they're finished that moment. Yeah. So many who get through it, as you have, go on, and like there is more in life yeah. for them, and they. they... And, and, and I suppose I, 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 my son, my, my four children, and uh, I didn't want to leave them the legacy that I, I, I done that. You know, because yeah. I think it would have been a. T a terrible legacy to leave them and I, I was already after yeah. doing enough damage to them I didn't yeah. want to do any more like you know but come here at, at the same time I, I the, my understanding would be that you you kind of alluded there earlier to that you you thought you were a bit of a bollocks before and a bit of an ego a bit of, yeah and like I hear a lot of guys saying this now that they're saying guys who don't have money anymore now maybe they're just saying yeah. it, but they're saying I'm a more I'm a more fulfilled functional person I have a better mm. relationship mm. with my family better mm. relationship with my kids mm. like you have a you feel you have a better relationship with your kids now and that you're not as much of an asshole, maybe, as you yeah, were before? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I suppose uh, I wouldn't have... Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't... Um, I, I don't think I was an asshole. I, I, I think I was, uh, I, was, I was genuine enough, like, you know? I wasn't saying you were not. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, I was... Uh, <laughs> well, a lot of fellas would agree with you, like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I suppose I tried, to, I tried to do the right things for maybe the wrong reasons, you know, whatever, like, you know, but I, yeah. tried, to, I tried to do the right things. But... Um, yeah, what was the question again? That I like without money now. Yeah. And you know you, you oh, work yeah. selling insurance a bit and stuff yeah, like that and you're right, living yeah. on way less than you were before. Yeah, about but two hundred a week, like, you know. Two in a way million, like yeah. you're a, a more fulfilled person, a better person, is I know it sounds like a cliche, but well, that... like well you, you I, I just I just had to you have to adapt, like and I found that um I found that my, my I kind of got a new perspective on I did I work on it hard, like to get a yeah. new perspective on money and on myself, like that your network didn't equal your self worth. Yeah. That I was, I was actually worth something just as I am with nothing. Okay, because your work never before had that. came yeah. from having yeah. all this stuff exactly. and being Johnny Big Nose. Yeah, and, and I never yeah. had that. I never had that. I never, I never felt I was worth something just as myself. Yeah. And, now, and then I said to myself, no, the last four years, because I didn't commit suicide, geez, it was unbelievable the last four years, like the things I've been able to do with my kids. And I said to myself, I could have missed all that, like. Yeah. All yeah. for dirty money, like a few dirty, 
euros, like you know. Yeah. That you you throw away this 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 thing and uh, it's extraordinary how how. But it, it 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 was a process, like it wasn't a kind of a flashlight, like it was a process where I said, look, um, that I'm in this situation now, I can't get over, and I I had great friends who helped me. I, I met one guy, he met me every day for a year, a fella called Alan Delore, he helped me, and he he when everyone else deserted me, the the the, the kind of uh, the solic- I had no money, so nobody wanted to know me. The solicitors didn't want to know me and the accountants, obviously, because I couldn't pay them, like, you know. Yeah. So I, I, just, I was just in an awful state, like, and uh, he, uh, he was kind of met me every day and he talked me through it, like, met me for an hour or two. Now, I probably demented him, like, you know, but yeah, he, said, yeah. he said, look, do the next right thing. Let's do the next right thing. Yeah. And the next right thing could be going for a cup of coffee, it could be making a phone call, it could be reading a book. Just do the next right okay, thing. OK, yeah. And keep doing the next right thing and eventually the right thing will start happening. And that's what I did. I just decided, look, I'm here now, I'm in the middle of this, I can't get out of it, I'm just going to do the next right thing. And I kept doing that. And listen, the, 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 and one of the next right things, I know, was to start helping other people. Yes. And you have, you have a thing now called MADS, is that right? Yeah, and, M- Money, and, Voice and Debt Service. And you're helping other people in the yes. same boat. Yeah, I found it, uh, found it hugely beneficial. Um, that uh, there's, there's a lot of fear out there, a lot of terror, a lot of shame. The institutions kind of use, use shame. They, they say, they yeah. take your house off you to scare you. We'll put you on Stubbs Gazette, humiliate you, shame you. Uh, we, we'll get a judgment against you. We'll go to court. We'll shame you. Yeah. So it's all shame-based. It's a very based, Irish like, you know? way of, of yeah, doing yeah, it. It's very well, shame-based. Like, and, and come here, can, can I ask you, um, so you're, you're doing this mads yourself. Is this a voluntary It's a voluntary thing, thing yeah, yeah. It's a voluntary thing. And are you uh, managing to also, like, make a living while doing well, this? I, well, it's tough, like, you know, I, I mean, yeah. I, 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 but, like, if a fellow's drowning, yeah. You don't walk past and say, like, well, actually, I can't pull you out now because I have something to do, like, you know? OK, you, yeah. you, you pull but ultimately, out, like. the state or, someone is going to ha- or somebody's going to have to come in and sponsor what, what, the MADS thing, aren't they? Well, so, well I, uh, maybe, like, uh, if I was down the road, but I'm going to kind of keep going as long as I can, like, yeah. you know? And uh, I just say, like, there's a lot of there's hope out there. It is amazing what you can do. Like, that, you, 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 if, you, if you kind of... Um, if you talk to people, you have to tell your problems to people. You have to, and I found meeting people, the great buzz I got, Brendan, was that when I met people, all right, and I talked to them, and I told them what happened to me and how I got through it and how I dealt with it on a daily basis and how I faced up. No, I'm still in the same situation. Nothing has changed, and everything has changed. Nothing yeah. has changed. Yeah. I actually owe as much money. My financial situation is actually worse now than it was four years ago. OK. But I'm, I'm a completely different person because I have a different state of mind. Joe, it's a great story. You've an amazing perspective on it as thanks well. And much. thanks very thanks much for, for sharing it I with us. And I, ho- that, I hope that Mads works out <laughs> well for you. Exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Harris. <laughs> Hello, do I have do I have David McKevitt from Cork on the line? Hi, Brendan. Not a Cork person on the show. How's it going, David? Good, very well, thank you. Okay, so I have to ask you the question. What's Bob Geldof's daughter who announced her pregnancy earlier in the week? Peaches. Peaches is the right answer. You're going to Boston. Well done, David. Thank you, Brendan. That's it for tonight's show. I'd like to thank all my guests. Joe Harris there, General Fiasco, Peter O'Reardon, Adrian, Natalie, Grace, Cayley and Killian from Operation Transformation, Julian Simmons and, of course, Rachel Allen. On the next Saturday, good night.